On a freezing winter morning on December 17, 1962, William Ebenezer Billy Jones Jr. and his sister Jill eagerly got into their snowsuits to play in the front yard of their Taylor Avenue home in Vineland, New Jersey. What followed is a search that has lasted 62 years, making it one of New Jersey's oldest missing persons cases. Join Bad Things as we look at the strange missing person case of William Billy Jones Jr. We'll cover what happened, what could have happened, and what most likely happened to the three-year-old boy in 1962. The blondish, brown-haired, blue-eyed boy excitedly donned his light blue gray snowsuit to enjoy a mid-afternoon play session with his two-year-old sister Jill on their snow-covered front lawn. The day began as a regular busy pre-Christmas day. Billy's father left the house that morning to start his shift at the New York Shipbuilding Company in Camden. In the morning, Evelyn took the children to do a few errands. Billy got a haircut and they went to the bank. When he got home, the blondish brown-haired blue-eyed boy excitedly donned his light blue gray snowsuit to enjoy a mid-afternoon play session with his two-year-old sister Jill and the family dogs, a basset hound called Baby Cakes, and a collie on their snow-covered front lawn. Billy loved his dogs, especially Baby Cakes, reading and playing with toy cars. He was three months short of his fourth birthday and was inclined to twist his hair and shuffle walk. Their mother, Evelyn Jones, watched Billy and his younger sister through the kitchen window, preparing lunch while they played in the snow. At some point, Evelyn went into a bedroom to check on her infant son. Around 11.45 a.m., a neighbor saw Billy alone and urged him to go home. Evelyn heard a knock on the door at 1 p.m. She opened the door and was surprised to discover Jill standing in the doorway alone. Jill was holding a plastic potted poinsettia that she said she got from Billy. When asked where Billy was, she said the bogeyman had taken him. Evelyn rushed out of the house and frantically ran up and down the street, looking for Billy. During her search, an unknown man drove up to Evelyn in his green vehicle and said, Are you Mrs. Jones? Evelyn did not respond. She did not know the man and wasn't curious about his name or why he was looking for her. She continued her frantic search for about an hour, but Billy was nowhere to be found. It was time to call the authorities. The family's basset hound, Baby Cakes, had also disappeared. She was later discovered soaking wet, a short distance from the house. Over the next four days, hundreds of people searched for Billy in the woods and along the local bodies of water. This search included volunteers, law enforcement, National Guard personnel, Navy helicopters and boats. Bloodhounds from Philadelphia were also sent to track the boy's scent. The dogs lost Billy's scent near the family home, most likely because of the large number of people coming to and from the home. All of the region's emergency services were summoned and they searched the area on foot, by boat and by air. They thoroughly searched the woods and swampland around Billy's house. Two Navy helicopters were called in to survey the area from above, with pilots noting excellent search conditions, saying that the trees were bare on a bright day, allowing them to view the sandy bottom of the Morris River clearly. Unfortunately, the search was futile. There was no trace of Billy anywhere. The disappearance sparked fear among the city's parents for the sake of their children and made national headlines. Understandably, Billy's parents could not emotionally accept his disappearance and left the town shortly after that. The plastic poinsettia that Jill had brought home was thought to be an essential clue in the early stages of the investigation. According to neighborhood accounts, two women were selling flowers in the area shortly before Billy disappeared and were thought to have a hand in this unexplained missing child case. However, it eventually came to light that the plastic poinsettia originated from a neighbor's garbage can and had been passed around and played with by numerous neighborhood children. This somehow led to the theory that Billy had ended up in the garbage can, either by climbing in or having his body dumped there. Authorities questioned the men who collected the trash on the day of Billy's disappearance. They said they would have noticed if a child was among the garbage. Nevertheless, officials carried out an extensive search of the local landfill site. 
no trace of Billy was found. As expected, theories were flying around the Vinland neighborhood about what happened to little Billy, so much so that even Baby Cakes the Basset Hound was implicated, albeit in an innocent way. Given that Baby Cakes was soaked when found, it was speculated that Billy drowned in a nearby body of water, likely Little Robin Branch Stream. Did Baby Cakes attempt to rescue the boy after he fell in, or did Billy enter the water trying to save Baby Cakes? At one point during the inquiry, the Jones family consulted a local psychic who said Billy was still alive. She told the family that he had been kidnapped by a man whose wife was experiencing a mental breakdown as a result of the loss of her own little boy. She speculated that Billy had been taken to an Amish community in Pennsylvania and raised by a new family. However, authorities challenged this assumption, claiming that Billy would have recollections of his family and would have told someone about his true identity as he got older. Another local psychic told detectives in 1964 that Billy was hit and killed by a driver in a car who had no intention of causing him harm. They panicked and buried Billy not far from where he disappeared. The psychic gave investigators a description of the man's car and appearance. Years later, Billy's sister Jill would be hypnotized, hoping she might recall additional details about the day her brother vanished. She says she remembered holding hands with Billy as two men fought in front of an oil drum fire at the Palace of Depression, a landmark near their house. I remember running, and eventually I could see the door to my house, she said. Built in the 1930s, the Palace of Depression was an architectural oddity made of scraps, garbage, and discarded building rubble. For almost 25 years, it became a national attraction, attracting over a quarter of a million people from all over the world. In 1956, the property's owner, the wildly eccentric George Dana, tried to persuade the FBI that the palace was involved in the abduction and murder of Peter Weinberger, a baby from New York, and ended up serving a year in prison after confessing to lying to federal officials. Vandalism on the property started about this period, partly owing to stories circulated by Dana that gold was hidden in one of the rooms. Dana died in 1964, and the city of Vineland demolished what remained of the building in 1969, showing that it was intact but neglected or abandoned at the time of Billy's disappearance. The palace was thoroughly examined to see if Billy may have wandered there on his own or been disposed of there, but nothing was discovered. Despite hundreds of leads and tips, no remains have been discovered, no arrests were made, and no credible sightings have been recorded. Somebody has to know something, I really do believe that, said former Vineland Police Sergeant Patrick Doherty. Until I see a body, I'm not going to rule out that he's alive. So what most likely happened to Billy Jones? With today's prevalence of social media, human trafficking has become a phrase used and seen almost daily. Many may think that this crime is a present-day scourge, but in the 1950s and 60s, human and especially child trafficking was rife, and in some cases, legally so. Forced adoptions in Chile, Guatemala, Australia, Ireland, and from Native American mothers are but the tip of the iceberg of what was going on in the 50s and 60s. The incidences of child abduction and murder were staggering, even by today's standards. Joseph Augustus Zarelli, also known as the boy in the box in 1957. Maria Elizabeth Rudolph was a seven-year-old girl who disappeared and was murdered in Sycamore, Illinois in 1957. The Beaumont children, three Australian siblings, were kidnapped near Adelaide, South Australia in 1966. Anne-Marie Burr vanished under mysterious circumstances from her home in Tacoma, Washington in August 1961. The Chicago Baby Kidnappings in 1964 These are just a fraction of thousands of cases. Billy Jones was most likely kidnapped and either murdered or raised by another family. The sheer scope of the search for Billy should have yielded results, even as arbitrary as a piece of clothing. Law enforcement were called within an hour of his disappearance, making it very unlikely that the three-year-old could have gotten very far on foot. 
Being kidnapped and taken away in a car would have been a totally different story, as the search protocols did not encompass closing off roads and searching cars. Vineland police detectives revived the investigation in 2009 under the name Lost Boy, assigned an official case number, and placed it into the National Crime Information Center. Detectives sent DNA samples from the Jones family to the New Jersey State Police and the University of North Texas DNA Lab. Investigators are also receiving assistance from the FBI's Behavioral Science Unit and the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, which provided authorities with an age progression picture of how Billy may look today. If you love our content and want to support the channel, feel free to check our web shop where you can find exclusive true crime merch brought to you by Bad Things.